Sheila Zielinski Show, the only show to give you the truth behind the headlines, prophecy, and the deeper things of God. Now, here is your host, Sheila Zielinski. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Sheila Zielinski Show for this April 17, 2017 edition. This is the last broadcast of April. I'm heading out tomorrow to Colorado, so that's going to be really exciting. Going to the Sharon and Monty Mulkey WCCD spring event slash deliverance conference. And then I'm planning a new launch sometime in the weeks to come. There is just far too many glitches going on at my website when we, obviously everyone knows when we moved it, the pie crumbled. And when the pie went back in the plate, well, it never was totally a whole pie again, if that's the way to describe it. So new things on the horizon. There are some new things coming. And make sure that you are subscribed to my e-newsletter because before I go, I'm going to be sending out a detailed e-newsletter on that. And so make sure you're subscribed to my free e-newsletter. I want to jump right into the show because I have on Mark Taylor. Of course, everyone has seen Mark on the Jim Baker show. He is a bold prophet of God from SORD rescue.com it is my pleasure again to have on retired lieutenant mark taylor such a pleasure sir to have you back on the program welcome thank you sheila for having me again it's an honor and pleasure to be back you know mark we just live in unprecedented times perilous times or exciting times i guess it depends your perspective but matthew 24 6 really has been coming to life, hasn't it? And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, but there's something that follows. And I think people are missing this part. It says, see that ye not be troubled. I think some folks forgot that line, Mark. Absolutely. You know, we've been praying for years and years and years. And, you know, I got inundated with emails because there's a lot of fear out there right now of what's fixing to take place about Syria and North Korea and this, that, and the other. And, you know, we've been praying and warring in the spirit for years. When Obama was in office, you know, him and his administration, we were praying for God to send us someone who would help lead America and not come from behind. And now we've got this, and now all of a sudden President Trump fires a few missiles into Syria, and now everybody's up in arms or either jumping off ship or this, that, and the other. I'm getting inundated with emails about this. Now, we've got North Korea coming into play. North Korea has been threatening us nuclear-wise for years, and Obama did nothing. Yeah. And that shot that was heard around the world in Syria, I believe it was God-ordained. If you look at the timing on that, Sheila, he was eating dinner with China when the shots were fired. That was a message to the entire world that we don't have a figurehead in the White House anymore being told what to do by the shadow government. We have a leader that is going to lead this country, protect this country at all costs. And that was a shot heard around the world saying that America is back. We are in the lead again, and we're not to be messed with. I guess I find this really surprising is Christians are selling out Donald Trump faster than Chris Christie can chow down a Big Mac. And yet, you know, why throw him under the bus at this point? Oh, he's sold out to the globalists. He's a New World Order shill. He's playing us. I mean, we get that he's surrounded by Kabbalistic Jews and Zionist Jews and neocon wolves who are hell-bent on, we get it, starting war probably with Russia and North Korea, but what is with all the flip-flopping and flim-flam Christians? Well, you know, again, we've been praying for years, and then all of a sudden we have someone that starts to lead and act on this, and they don't like what they're seeing, so they jump off ship. This is what the pastors of today have created. It all boils down to one thing, and that's leadership. We have no leadership in the church right now. And it's this watered-down, feel-good message. It's this hyper-grace movement, the 501c3, we can go on and on and on, that has created these Christians, so to speak, that when the warfare gets a little hot, they want to back off because it's going to interrupt their lives. They're afraid of interrupting their baseball games for their kids or their dance recitals or this, that, and the other. You know, we've been warring in the spirit for how long, asking for answers. Well, the warfare has been working. That's my point to the people right now. Our, you're seeing it manifest before our very eyes. This man just defunded for the states, for Planned Parenthood, where the states could defund them. I mean, we're chipping away at the food source of bail right now, which is these abortions. That's yeah. Bale's the, the strong man. That's his food source. He's keeping his promises. So you have to ask yourself, why is there such a hot spot in Syria and North Korea right now? 
because I believe, I'm of the belief of this, is that Syria representing the Middle East, North Korea representing the Asia, the gospel has got to go forth. And so if it means going in and spiritually oppressed people being set free, our warfare is working. Sometimes in the, in the natural, you know, there's a time for peace, there's a time for war. Sometimes shots have to be fired in the natural in order to uproot these so-called principalities or powers like North Korea, this dictator. He, they're a country held hostage by a dictator. There has been many people prophesy that North Korea is going to become one with South Korea. And I believe you're seeing that taking place right now. And it's going to be uprooting that demon-possessed dictator, Kim Jong-un, in order for the gospel to freely go forth throughout Asia. Here's the funny thing. I woke up this morning, and I saw in the spirit, Japan is open. So I believe what God is saying right now, through the Koreas, when they become one, I believe it's, the gospel is going to go out throughout Japan. Japan is ripe for the harvest right now. So this is what people are not understanding. You've got to look at the big picture. Let's say Donald Trump made a mistake by firing missiles on Syria. He's God's anointed. Do you not think for one second that God can't straighten it out? God is in control. And that's what people are, are wavering about. This is their faith. God is in control. Now, I released something the other day on a show that I think will help. Is that I believe this was a type of a promotional exam, Sheila. And the Lord showed me there's certain places where the body of Christ is at right now. And it's the body of Christ and the army of God are two different things like we talked about before. In D-Day, those guys were on those ships for three days. They were being tossed about, seasick. And he said, that's where the majority of the body of Christ is right now. Because in my prophetic words, I talk about America being the launching platform for the end time harvest where well, you're seeing it take place right now so they're on these ships they're seeing the storm and they're being tossed to and fro most of the body of christ and all they're focusing on is the storm and they're seasick and what god's trying to do is get them promoted that group out of the boat and in the landing craft now you have a group that's been promoted and they're in the landing craft and they're approaching the beaches now if you know anything about d-day they put obstacles on the beaches to keep the armor from landing but that group is focused on the obstacles. Now, the obstacles could be Syria, it could be North Korea, it could be whatever. It's different for each person. But they're approaching the beach, and all they see are the obstacles, and it's keeping them from getting onto the beach. That's the second group. The third group is the army of God. They are mature enough, spiritually mature enough, not to focus on the storm, not to focus on the obstacles, but focus on the mission. That is to hit the beaches, take ground for the kingdom of God, and hold it at all costs. So that's where our groups are at right now. And this was a promotional process, and a lot of people, unfortunately, flunked. <laughs> flunked. That is a really very excellent analogy. And here's the bottom line. This is not the time to abandon him now. This is not the time to give up on him now. He's only been in office a short time. If anything, we should be ramping up our spiritual warfare. But, Mark, here's where the rubber meets the road. It's not about putting our trust in Trump. I personally believe that he has raised up a Cyrus, but we don't put our trust in any man. We put our trust in God. Correct. Absolutely. You know, and if you believe that God has anointed this man, and we've given, God has given sign for sign after sign that this man is anointed and appointed by God. You have to believe that God is in this no matter what happens. Even if he does make a mistake, God can step in and correct it. You know, the man's not even been in 90 days, Sheila. I just read an article that where Obama, at this time in his administration, had double the administration that Donald Trump does. So he's working with only half the administration that he's supposed to have. So it's like, give this man an opportunity. Give God an opportunity, time, to work with this man. Get the right people in place. God will protect the United States. God will protect his people until that happens. But at least give the man a chance. Don't start flip-flopping. Yeah. Well, it's interesting what you said about he's only been in 90 days, and yet people are crucifying the guy already. I've, I said this last year that Trump is a modern-day King Cyrus. I really believe that Trump is appointed and anointed by God to subdue nations that are threatening God's purposes. And I personally think that he is going to subdue both Syria and North Korea because that's what he's being guided to do. The little fat-headed leader there in North Korea, the little demonized lunatic that he is, better be careful. And like you said, how many times has he proclaimed he's going to launch a nuclear attack on the United States? So what I think he's doing is he is anointed to deal with this rogue, out-of-control government gone bad. He's taken draining the swamp to a whole new level, and I think he will. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I say you have to ask yourself, why is Syria and North Korea coming into this? 
because I believe God's wanting to free the spiritually oppressed peoples of the earth. I wrote that in that D-Day speech that I wrote that God had me address to, to the army of God to literally release the spiritually oppressed people of the earth. And I believe this is part of it. Again, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So we have to ask and go before the Lord and stop acting on emotion because we disagree with something. You know, God's got this thing under control. That's the main thing. And the other thing I want to encourage people is stop listening to these news media outlets that are spreading fear, propaganda, and paranoia. They're instilling paranoia into the people, and I believe they're puffing this thing up worse than what it actually is. And now, again, we live in this technology age, this information age, where people think they're entitled to know every little step that's going on. And it's like we don't see the intelligence that President Trump is seeing coming in three and four times a day probably by his people. They're not going to tell us everything. See, we had eight years of Obama telling the enemy when we're coming and what we're doing and this, that, and the other. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. It's none of our business. But when you have a country that's threatening the United States with nuclear weapons, it's time to act. So, I mean, that's what people have to understand. I understand people don't want war, this, that, and the other. They want peace. Well, who doesn't? Again, our warfare is working. Sometimes shots have to be fired in the natural in order to take down some of this stuff. Yeah, there is a time to act. Remember, I love what, I think he said it on Sean Hannity, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver Norris said, hey, if you want to send a message, you can send flowers. But if you want to send a message that matters, send cruise missiles. And that's exactly what Trump did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, we have had, or we've had presidents that are figureheads. They're not leaders. And that's what America's not used to. Now we have a true leader in the White House. He's not being told what to do by the cabal or whatever the case may be, the shadow government. He's got true leadership. This is, I mean, in my prophetic words, God talks about he's going to put together America's dream team. You're seeing it in place right now. And America's not used to it. America's not used to, we're we're in this day and age where, you know, to eat an elephant, you eat it one bite at a time. Let's just do a little bit of change at a time. But this man's not like that. This administration's not like that. You're going to see like a Moab, spiritual Moabs being dropped so to speak, because he's in for massive change in a quick way. And I believe that's where we're at right now. Even God is saying, hey, I've got spiritual Moabs that are ready to be dropped. I just need some people who are willing and have the courage to drop them in the spiritual realm. So that's where we're at right now with this warfare. Well, and what's interesting is you just mentioned the deep state alignment. Do you notice how the narrative is quietened down in one moment? Trump un- you know, undoes this whole Russia, he's aligned with yeah. Russia. What happened to the Russia myth, Mark? Why aren't we hearing yeah. that anymore? Absolutely. You know, and I think what's going to happen is that, you know, I, I tell people, stop listening to those news media outlets. I listen to Donald Trump's Twitter feed and his Facebook because you're getting it, the truth straight from the source, the president himself. That's what I love about that. You know, some people are criticizing him for that. I love it because he's bypassing the fake news. So you're getting it straight from the president himself. Stop listening to the doom and gloom because you can become addicted to the doom and gloom, Sheila. I mean, how many times have we seen that? I mean, look at Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck started off righteously exposing things, this, that, and the other, and I believe that he became addicted to the doom and gloom, and somewhere along that line, he went down the wrong path, and look what's happened to him. So don't listen to the doom and gloom so much. Well, you know, what happened to the good news, the gospel? He said, go out and preach the good news, not the doom and gloom, you know, and, and... The tide has turned. The tide has literally turned for the Christians. Now, the church has produced this. This is what the church has produced. The church has a slavery mentality, and I just released this the other day as well, is that we're called to rule and reign and to govern. Well, how can you govern, per se, and have true leadership when you're being governed over? If a church is a corporation, you're being governed by the state now. If you're 501c3, now you have a second level, which is the federal government. So that's why I'm praying for Trump to do away with the 501c3 so that now the federal government's gone, so to speak. And as far as a church being a corporation, it was never meant for a church to be a corporation because now you're being governed by the state. Because if you get a rogue state or a rogue leadership state like California, if Trump does do away with the 501c3, let's say, now they can come in and say, hey, if you're a corporation and you're a house of worship, you're going to preach homosexuality or transgender from the pulpit, and we're just going to shut you down if you don't. But they're being told, they're being indoctrinated through the 501c3, through the federal government for years. They, these pastors have been indoctrinated. So this is what's happening. We've produced these milk toast Christians, the spirit of cowardness. That's where we're at right now. That's what's happening with the body of Christ. It gets a little hot, they get fearful, and then they back up. 
And that's not what God's looking for in the army of God. I'm gonna, I haven't gone public with this, but this is going to be the first time I'm going to go public with some of this stuff. But from back all the way from Adam and Eve, the devil has tormented mankind, period. And the tide has turned is what the Lord's been telling me, because I wrote that in that D-Day speech. The tide has turned. Now, what does that really mean? I believe the time has come when the army of God is going to inflict such damage on the enemy. It's like switching a spiritual switch, if you will, and that we are now going to torment the devil and his minions. That's what I believe, because I always wondered, why, why would this Lord put Satan down here with us? Because I believe in my heart that it was meant for us to torment him, not the other way around. Wow. But the tide has turned, and I believe you're going to see victory after victory after victory, and that's going to be the devil's punishment. Yeah. Well, you know, this reminds me of, well, there's two of the Red Sea incidents that really are very similar to this, and it's one, how quickly they turned on Moses. You know, they said to him, oh, what, there wasn't enough graves in Egypt yet to bring us out here to die in the wilderness? But it's also about the rod of authority. What did God say to Moses? Lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea. God is telling Moses, hey, pal, I gave you the rod of authority. Use it. And I feel like that's what God's saying to us. I've already given it to you. It's time we used our rod of authority and take back ground. But it's time that we stormed the enemy's camp and dropped spiritual moabs, like you said, on the enemy. Mark, look how many people are speaking word curses against Trump. Proverbs 18.21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. They're like frenzied piranhas on social media. Oh, just as I suspected, he's a cabal, he's a minion, he's a paid shill, he's a globalist, he's sold out, he's a puppet. Ah, just as I suspected, he's a clone, he's in a trance. They've threatened his family. I mean, it just goes on. Fill in the blank. How about people get off social media and get in their prayer closet? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I, I talked about this on, on some other things that I've done, interviews I've done, is that, you know, people are prophesying the plans of the second heaven as if it were the plans of the third heaven. And that's not the case. And the problem is, is when you do that, you're empowering the plans of the enemy. Like you said, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So why are we speaking these curses? Why are we not speaking blessings? You know, there's people out there on YouTube that call themselves preachers or evangelists or whoever they are. They're saying America needs to burn. It deserves to burn. Well, I don't want to see my country burn. I don't have that mentality. God doesn't want to burn America. God wants to, to, to affect a rescue mission, which is what the rescue mentality that people need to have instead of this attack, attack, attack. And so America is, is not going to burn. So stop arming the enemy with it. Yeah, that's right. But nobody bats an eye at selling baby body parts to the highest bidder or the butchering of our brethren. No, they're not in a fervent uproar descending on their leaders like a swarm of mad locusts when that happens. No. Look at Judge Gorsuch. He's just recently been confirmed to the Supreme Court. There's a really good chance that before the year is over, another Supreme Court judge steps down and Trump has the opportunity to appoint another conservative judge to the court with the potential to overturn the abominable Roe versus Wade. That's huge, Mark. Absolutely. And did the people take notice of the prophetic sign that was given four weeks into Donald Trump's presidency? The lady that was responsible for the Roe versus Wade court case died. That was a prophetic sign that Roe versus Wade is going to die under this administration. So that prophetic word that God gave me about Roe versus Wade and reforming the court is already coming to pass. So we have a chance here to literally take the food source away from Baal, which is these aborted babies, the child sacrifices, which you're seeing also come to light as well. That's being exposed, and this corruption is being exposed. But, you know, you've got to give people time to get this stuff in place. They've got to build a case. This stuff takes time. And people, we live in this microwave society where they want it to happen overnight. So some of this stuff is going to take time. But it will happen. God is in the midst of all of this. And you're going to see Roe versus Wade overturned. Well, Mark, you said something on my show last time, and I think it actually warrants a full show. You were talking about the 440 hertz. And I think at some point it really deserves more discussion. I had this guy in my show years ago that was a former mega church insider, and he was talking about the science of church and how they use these psychological techniques on people like deep trance hypnosis, 
hypnotic induction, auto-suggestion, neurohypnotism, services using these hypnotic NLP techniques, putting people in a trance, having one's dopamine transmitters stimulated by belief-induced delusions using mind control and psychological components, the lighting. There's a science to the lighting, the ceilings, the layout, the colors, the sound traveling in a specific way, the frequencies they send out, all these things working together designed to manipulate the senses, the heating's a certain way, they pump out oxygen into the church. I mean, this, Mark, is a nightmare when you get into this. Yes, correct. And, you know, um, from a firefighting standpoint, it's funny you, you mentioned pumping oxygen in because they do that a lot of times at casinos because that's why you see casinos. When they burn, they burn so hot, they're pumping O2 in those rooms, and they don't want people sleeping. They want you spending their money. So the 440 hertz is what everything's being broadcast in. It's the international radio frequency that everything's broadcast, the news, the radio, everything. So even your alternative news media is being broadcast in that. And it comes from the Rockefellers. They did a study back uh, with the Navy back in World War I because it produces fear, produces paranoia. I mean, what are we seeing coming out of the news media right now? Fear, paranoia. And what they found was it actually will change your DNA. And I, what I believe, Sheila, is happening right now, this is why the millennials are in such bad shape right now, is because we have come with a full generation that this technology, if you will, these frequencies has changed the entire DNA of, of that generation. We've come full circle with it. Well, this is going to be really interesting for the listeners because as soon as Mark and I started recording and we got on this subject, all of a sudden my Adobe Audition shut down and something in the background on my iMac started playing another show. And it just totally stopped the recording. I wasn't anywhere near it. It just shut down all by itself. And it was just, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. As we were talking about the subject of frequencies. Well, and Captain Retired Jerry Flynn was telling me he was an electronic warfare specialist trained by the military in radio warfare. He said that during Hitler's Nazi regime, when the crowds would come out, they would blast frequencies out, just subtle frequencies that would make them nauseous and have a headache, feel really sick. And as soon as Hitler would start speaking, they would cut that and suddenly the people in the audience would just feel signs of euphoria. And so they associated him when he spoke with complete euphoria and, and feelings of well-being. Yeah, it's a mesmerizing spirit. And, you know, one of the prophets years ago had prophesied that the same spirit that was on Adolf Hitler was on Obama. It was a mesmerizing spirit. So you got to ask yourself, you know, I, I call 4, 4, 440 hertz, I call it Satan's frequency because – You've also got churches that are tuned, have their instruments tuned to some of that frequency. And it's like in a worship service, what are you ushering in? Are you ushering in the Holy Spirit or are you ushering in the Kundalini under that frequency? So you, this is where we got to be careful. This is where we got to arm ourselves with that type of knowledge and that type of revelation that God's releasing right now. This is a huge thing, as we just found out, because we have technical difficulties. We're touching on something here that the enemy's not liking. Because if you were to really retune back to God's frequency – international tuning, you would not see the paranoia. You wouldn't see the fear. You wouldn't see the damage being – it literally does damage to the, um, the body parts, to, to the heart, to the liver, all these different body parts. They're saying this frequency does, and we're being bombarded with these frequencies every single day with technology. But also when you talk to Christians, it's like they come in – you just mentioned that mesmerizing spirit. They come under this fog, this – dystopic trance where they just tune you out the minute you start talking about the truth? They, do you notice they just tune out? Yeah, and I, that's what I was going to go uh, before we got cut off, I think. I was going to this uh, Sodom and Gomorrah story where what the Lord was showing me where the church is at because, you know, the church and the leadership especially is under judgment right now. And if you go back to Sodom and Gomorrah, if you go to the story where God was affecting a rescue mission, which I believe he's doing right now, trying to pull righteous people out of that church system, that's what's under judgment right now is the church system. So if you go back to Lot, and when the angels were there, you had a group of men that came up, knocked on Lot's door, and wanted to be with the two men, not knowing they were angels. Well, it got so bad, the angels reached out, they grabbed Lot, yanked him inside, and slammed the door shut and struck the men with blindness, the men being representing the church. That's where I believe the church being under judgment, the door has been shut to some of these churches. They've been struck with blindness, and God's trying to pull out the righteous ones right now. 
affect a rescue mission. So that's why I think you're seeing some of these churches that are in a fog right now because they're under judgment. Yeah, I agree. And you know what's really, I'm noticing this, and perhaps you are too, but the level of nastiness that is coming against people that are speaking the truth, those of us that refuse to compromise and boldly proclaim the truth, no matter what anybody thinks, especially when you start tackling subjects that others won't touch at the 10-foot pole, when we speak on them, such as the 501c3 church, no one is talking about that. And I find the level of nastiness coming against us is at an all-time high. I've never seen nothing like it. Absolutely. I mean, I'm getting attacked all the time. I mean, you know, and my prophetic team is also now getting threats. So, uh, I mean, you know, to the point where they may have to get security. And, I mean, mm-hmm. it's not just the jackals, the hyenas, uh, you know, from the enemy's camp. It's it's the, those who call themselves Christians. You know, it's bad enough you have to go against the enemy, much less your own people. And that's not what God's calling his people to. He's calling his people to unity. And you can't have unity when you're throwing fiery arrows at one another. You know, just because you disagree with something, yes, you may have the constitutional right to air it out. But what I'm going to warn people with right now is that these keyboard commandos, and I've said it before on your show before, God says, I'll discipline those I love. Well, you can't have discipline without accountability. And I believe that the time is here now. These keyboard commandos, and you keep tapping away on that keyboard, you better think twice before hitting that enter button. Because you may wake up the next morning with leprosy, or you may not wake up at all. Well, there's a separating, and I think God is really getting fed up with it. I personally believe that. And I personally believe he's fed up with this candy cane, cotton candy church that is just love, 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 kumbaya, let's join hands, slap a Jesus fish on your car next to your coexist sticker, live and let live, never mind that society's going to hell in a hand basket. We live in a very morally bankrupt society where everything goes, and I just think God is getting fed up with it. The church is in just a horrific state right now, and that is heartbreaking. Yeah, it, you know, and, and that's the whole thing, is that the church has lost, because they've been inside the four walls for so long, we've had no leadership for so long, they don't know how to lead. They don't know how to approach people. They, they want to beat people over the head with the Bible, beat them over the head with the Bible. And it's like some of these people on the street know the Bible better than some believers because they've been beating the head with it so much. It's like what happened to the days when you can approach someone with love, give them the truth and love, show them the love of Christ. You know, it's, it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. So, you know, again, it's all about the love, and the love of the church has grown cold, and that's what you're seeing. The love of the people has grown cold. That's why you're seeing the fiery arrows coming in at people like ourselves who are on the front lines, who are putting it all out there, trying to move the kingdom of God forward, but yet people just want to sit back and they want to do the armchair quarterbacks and this, that, and the other. And I'm telling people now, the time has come where you're going to be held accountable for it. And I honestly believe because of the corruption in the church as well, because everything's caught on video now. So I believe now the time has come when you're going to see some of these corrupt pastors drop dead in the pulpit, and it's going to be caught on video for the entire world to see. Tom Horn wrote a book several years ago, and I think it was before his time, because I'll tell you, is that ever coming to pass, called Blood on the Altar, Christian versus Christian, and you're really seeing this really unfolding right now, aren't you? Yes. God is separating the sheep from the goats, uh, the wheat from the chaff, I mean, whatever expression you want to use, he is separating his true church from the counterfeit church. You're seeing that take place right now. You know, I asked the Lord one day, I said, Lord, because he was dealing with me on the church being under judgment. I said, Lord, what is the judgment? What exactly is the judgment? And the scary part about this judgment, Sheila, is that it's not like Sodom and Gomorrah. You don't see fire and brimstone coming in at Mach 10. You know what I mean? It's not obvious. It's a judgment that you don't see coming. Yeah. And he told me, he said, it's it's First and Second Timothy 4. Their consciences have been seared with a hot iron, and they would no longer listen to sound doctrine and truth. And he showed me a train and the locomotive had Babylon on it, and each car hooked to it was a ministry, represented a ministry. And if you draw a horizontal line through it, that, that train would cross. He said it's moving at warp speed. He said that line is called the point of no return, and that's First and Second Timothy 4. And you're seeing that take place. You're seeing people no longer listening to sound doctrine. You're seeing people no longer listening to the truth. They don't want to hear it. You know, They don't want to upset the apple cart, so to speak. And you know, I'll give a modern-day example of what this looks like. My lead intercessor had a run-in with a young lady uh, right before the election. matter of fact, Trump's name came up, and this lady went to the local church, and she just went off on my intercessor. 
And my intercessor was just looking for the exit door. And you know, she was calling Trump every name in the book and this, that, and the other. You know, we have our survival food. You know, we've only got two or three years left. You know, we're just going to hunker down and ride this thing out. Well, that's it. That's the judgment right there. Because they have literally, with the escapism mentality, they've taken themselves out of the fight, number one. And number two, if that church is, in fact, doing that, they are no longer any good to the kingdom of God because they're in survival mode. You can't forward the kingdom being in survival mode. That's not where God called us to be. He never said lay down your weapons of warfare. It's time to pick them up and advance. It's time to advance right now, and you can't do it in survival mode or having the escapism mentality. But that's what the judgment looks like. You don't see it coming. It's like eating away at you very slowly until finally it's got you in its grip, and that's the judgment. Or it's either that or they're on the first one-way flight out of here so they don't have to deal with anything because, you know what, pre-trib, we're out of here, Mark. (laughs) Yeah, you know, again, I tell people focus on the mission. Don't allow some of this stuff that you're hearing or it was pre, post, mid, whatever the case may be, whatever that you believe in. You know, people have allowed the escapism mentality to become a stumbling block. Yes. They've allowed the, – it's not that the book of Revelation is a stumbling block, but they have allowed it to become a stumbling block. And it's like they're so focused on when the Lord's coming back. They want to be that person that says, hey, he's coming back on this day, this year. And the Lord flat out said, nobody's going to know the time. Nobody's going to know the date. The Lord himself doesn't even know. Only our Heavenly Father knows. But it becomes a stumbling block when you focus on that. I'm the type of person that it doesn't matter to me when the Lord comes back. My heart is right, so it doesn't matter. I focus on the mission, and that's what people have to get straight. Focus on the mission. We fight. We hold ground until he does come back. Amen. we got to get in the game, not hunker down and bunker down and hope for the best. But Jesus said, occupy until I come. Advance the kingdom. Go out and preach the gospel to all nations. Lay hands on the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. I mean, there's so many things that we could be doing instead of arguing over flat earth and post-trib and how to pronounce Jesus' name. I mean, it's absolutely pure insanity. And all the while, they've got lots of time for Instagram and Pinterest, but they got no time for God. No time to get in his word and press into the things of him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and again, stop listening to these people. On I get so many emails. Did you hear what this person said on YouTube? Did you hear what that person said? I, I don't even know these people. I am very, very careful who I listen to, who I learn from, and whose books I read. And I encourage people, be very careful what you read and who you listen to, because this could be leading you down the wrong path. You know, again, don't allow it to become a stumbling block. And that's what a lot of this stuff is doing right now. They're, they're so geared on when the Lord's coming back. This is the end. I don't believe it's the end. Now, I don't want to put a false sense of timing on people because the Lord could come back whenever he wants. But I believe there's a lot that God wants to accomplish in the earth right now. This is not about America again. This is about the entire earth. So, again, what, what's going on with Trump? This is about the entire earth. I believe there's a lot that God wants to accomplish through his army, and he will accomplish it through his army. And whether you're part of that army or not is up to you. But that's where I believe we're at. That's where I believe we're going. You know, again, he wants to accomplish a lot on the earth. So I don't think we're at that juncture yet where it's that particular time. That's just me. It reminds me of Matthew 25, 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. It's really important to get your hearts prepared no matter when the day is of our Lord's return. We've got to be ready for the return is the point. But boy, oh boy, Mark, the church has a long ways to go. I mean, I was just reading in a survey that 73% of the church doesn't believe in demons, the devil, hell, or even the Holy Spirit. That itself ought to show you the state of the church. So if the church is like that, well, how are they going to go preach the gospel to the rest of the world and address the need for the harvest of souls when they can't even get it together? Uh, yeah, that doesn't surprise me one bit. Uh, I mean, it just tells me, well, you know, look, it, it tells me, Sheila, that they're not on the front lines, number one, because if your life's not a living hell, then you're not on the front lines. You're not a threat. And when you're not a threat, guess what? Those demons are going to leave you alone. It's when you are a threat, like what just happened to us on the technology side right now, people don't want their lives 
you know, maybe altered a little bit. They, they want to go to their ball games or their dance recitals or whatever the case may be with their kids, and they don't want that lifestyle interrupted. Or they want to go to their social clubs, which are now churches, so they don't want that interrupted. And when you get into this stuff, you know, you can't make this stuff up. Warfare is real. We've both experienced it on our ends. It's real. When you're on the front lines, it's real. Yeah, you better believe it is. Well, for those folks listening, Mark, what would be your message to those saying, yeah, yeah, this is all nice, but don't you understand, Sheila and Mark, we're on the verge of World War III here? Uh, my message to those people is, is to pray for our president and his administration for wisdom and discernment and to stay engaged in the fight, armor up and get in the fight. The army of God is going to now torment. The tide has turned like we talked about. The army of God is going to now torment the enemy. I love what Donald Trump says. He says, you're going to get sick of winning if there is such a thing. You know, we have been tormented our whole lives, and now it's our turn to torment. Because we're going to have victory after victory after victory, just like we had on November 8th, just like we had on the inauguration, just like we're seeing with the abortion issues, just like we're going to see with national security. You know, sometimes there will be some engagements especially with ISIS, God's going to wipe them out. So, I mean, don't fear and don't cower down in the face of the enemy. Stay engaged in the fight and don't get discouraged and be careful who you listen to. Don't listen to the doom and gloom. Stay engaged in the fight. That is the most important thing because we're going to have victory after victory. This thing's not going to turn out the way people think and the way the news media is portraying things. There may be some shots fired, but even if there is, God is still in it. That's the main thing. God is in control. I think there's some things that are really dear to the heart of God and very extremely strategic things that need to be targeted in prayer. We already see Trump exposing pedophilia, human trafficking. Look at these pedophile rings and the drug traffickers. So there's corruption at every level of the government. Why do you think he said he wanted to drain the swamp? You've got Soros and the Clintons and Obamas and Bushes and others. And this defunding of Planned Parenthood, which is, again, folks, do I need to remind people selling baby body parts to the highest bidder and the eventual overturn of Roe versus Wade? I think we need to be praying for the educational system, the vaccine conspiracy, and big pharma. This itself is just an atrocity. The United Nations, Agenda 2030, the EPA, the badly degraded military, and look what's happened under eight years of Obama, and people want everything to change overnight. And I just don't think people quite get what Trump is up against here. And that is why he needs our prayers. Right. And, you know, and God already – this shouldn't be a surprise to us that this is going on. Because God told us – I said this on your program, I believe, that, you know, after Trump was in office, the first four or five months were going to be a little rocky. There were going to be some hot spots. Well, we thought – Again, you've got to be careful with the prophetic because you think it means one thing, but it actually could mean several things. And now in this case, Syria and North Korea are a hot spot. So these are hot spots. We already knew this was coming. So we already knew ahead of time to be praying. Stop listening to the people in the news media because they're saying this is going to happen, that's going to happen. That's what they said about Trump. Nobody thought Trump was going to be able to get in. That's all we heard with the bombardment of, of the poll numbers and this, that, and the other. And it came to pass. Trump got in. And there it is. So God answered prayer. So I don't believe that God's going to put this man in office to allow him to fail because he's God's anointed. But it's up to us to blaze a trail in the spiritual realm to get involved and to pray for him and support him. I support my president 100% because I know God's behind him. God's hand is upon him. So no matter what happens, God is in control. And don't you find it fascinating? Trump was the very one that was speaking out against the 501c3 and saying, hey, The church doesn't take its direction from the government. That's exactly what Trump was saying. He was speaking out against the power and control of the 501c3, against churches. How ironic is that? Absolutely. And, you know, I I wrote that prophetic word on the 501c3, and I went public with it. And two months later is when he started addressing the 501c3. So, I mean, if I honestly believe that if President Trump knew the depth, the length, and the width of corruption that the 501c3 is causing in our churches because it's that demonic portal that God showed me is open over those churches because they're in covenant with the kingdom of darkness, I believe he would do away with the whole thing if he truly knew how, how deep and dark that covenant actually is. But Jared Kirshner and these people with agendas, you know what? The devil's got an agenda, too. That's even more reason for us to get in our prayer closets, get a prayer partner, get praying about this. 
ask that God would remove people that are wolves in sheep's clothing that are surrounding our president. This is where binding and loosing and using our powerful arsenal of tools that God gave us comes into effect. Are you talking about the problem more than you're praying about it? That's an issue. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you've got, even if they are into Judaism or whatever the case may be, it is our job to effect a rescue. It's our job to go in and pull these people out of the fiery furnace. You know, again, it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. You know, and the Lord was telling me uh, the other day in my, in my prayers, he said, loose the battle plans of heaven. And I went, oh, wow, that's a... I like that, you know, (laughs) loose the battle plans of heaven. So I I encourage the people out there in your prayers, decree battle plans of heaven be loosed over the earth right now. And I believe that's what God is doing right now. Again, you're seeing this manifest in the natural. Our warfare is working, but this is not a time to operate in fear. And that's what's happening. When shots get fired in the natural, people get a little fearful. I get it to a point, but we have to stand faithful. We have to stand with courage and know that God's got it. And I say to people, don't tell God how big these circumstances are. Tell the circumstances how big your God is. And that's not a little cutesy phrase. God's got this. Give God some credit here. This is where we, though, have to be really stepping up our warfare prayer, stepping up our game, prayer, fasting. I think those things are really important. And as you said, that's really good, loosing the battle plans of heaven. So, Mark, if you would lead us in a prayer, and we will stand in agreement with you. Absolutely. So, Father, we just come before you right now. And, Father, we just ask that you would bless Donald Trump, President Trump, and his administration. Father, I ask that you would release the sevenfold spirit upon him and his entire administration right now, Father. I loose the battle plans of heaven upon the earth right now, Father, to forward your kingdom, to take ground for the kingdom of God, and hold it at all costs. Father, I ask that you would remove the scales from the eyes of the believers right now so that they can see. Open their deaf ears right now, Father God. We bind the, that slavery mentality that the church has right now, Father. Father, we just decree and declare that it is time now, the tide has turned, and it's time now for us to torment the enemy right now, Lord. Lord, we ask that your battle plans would go forth, that we would take that ground. We just decree and declare right now that North Korea would become one with South Korea, and that this evil dictator would be taken down by whatever means that you declare or decree, Father. And, Father, we just pray right now that Japan is open right now. It is ripe for the harvest. Father, we don't want revival. Revivals come and go. We want a habitation of the Holy Spirit over America right now and over the entire earth, that the entire earth is ripe for the harvest right now, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you for what you're going to do, Father. We bind the spirit of fear over your people right now with what's going on with Syria and North Korea right now, Lord. Fear of this world war coming to pass. Lord, I decree and declare over your people peace, courage, boldness right now that no matter what happens to know that you are in the midst of it right now, Lord. And when we see this come to pass, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for doing that, Mark. Because we really do have to be praying. We have to be binding the strong man over these nations. And we have to be praying for God's will to be done. It's about God's will being done on the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's not, again, this is not Trump's agenda. That's what people have to understand. And, and they think this is Trump's agenda. This is God's agenda. And that's what we have to get engaged with. Again, these are the battle plans of heaven. This is not just about the United States. This is about the entire earth. And we have to know what those battle plans are. Well said, Mark. Well said. And, Mark, I just want to thank you not only for coming on the program today, but thank you for who you are. Thank you for standing up for the truth. We love you. You have a lot of courage and boldness, my friend. There's a whole lot of us that are praying for you. Keep fighting the good fight, my friend. And be that guy that you are, that the devil just cringes. <laughs> oh, he's getting out of bed again today. Keep being that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, absolutely. You, you know, uh, when you're on the front lines, uh, you know, you've got mainstream news media coming after you. You've got the enemy coming after you. You've got Christians coming after you. So it's like, <laughs> you know, you, you just do the best you can. And uh, I appreciate all your prayers, and I thank you for having me. It's been an honor and a pleasure being back on your show. Thank you, Mark. God bless you. Folks, that was Mark Taylor from, bookmark his site, swordrescue.com. That's S-O-R-D, 
rescue.com. Shoot him an email and let him know you heard him on the show today and send him a letter of encouragement. I think it's really important for those of us on the front lines to get encouragement. I mean, we get enough of the jackals and hyenas. It's important to be uplifting our brethren in prayer, especially ones that are, (laughs) you know what, Mark said something really astute, and it almost went over people's head. Unless your life is a living hell, it, it is a living hell when you are engaged in the battle. When you're messing with the enemy in a big way, boy, let me tell you what, your life can be a living hell. Mark nailed it. We come under a lot of spiritual attack. I don't think people have any idea of how badly There's very few of us that have the courage, you know, in this politically correct world when we're not supposed to offend anybody. You have no idea the amount of guests that refuse to come on my show because of some of the topics I cover. And there's a whole lot of people that don't want me to come on their show to promote things like spiritual warfare because no one wants to talk about that. It's not a popular subject to talk about. It was really funny. I got this email and it was a Love Your Life conference. And I thought, that's weird. John 12:25 says, anyone who loves their life will lose it. So, you know, you're seeing all these subtle nuances in the church because it's all about loving your life. It's not about taking up your cross daily. Remember that. Like Jesus said, go into all the world and make sure that every day is a Friday. We're supposed to be trusting God daily for our bread. Give us this daily bread. We're not even promised tomorrow. But you know what we should be doing daily? We should be feasting and filling up on the Word of God daily, not making excuses for why we just don't have the time for God. And also fasting needs to become part of your regular regimen. And I'm not talking about fasting Facebook. Oh, I fasted Instagram today. Oh, I'm so spiritual. Listen, the early church didn't fast social media. It's food, folks. And don't let the devil convince you otherwise. It is physical food that fasting is talking about. So go study fasting. Do a fast. Commit to doing a weekly fast from the time you get up, from the time you go to bed. You do not eat. And fasting, I'll tell you what, it's become a dying art. And you know what I think? I think it's one of the most powerful things. It's just like Jesus said, how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. You want to have some power? People email me all the time. How can I get a breakthrough? I'll tell you right there. You commit to those things, and I'm going to tell you, you're going to get the breakthrough. You're going to have power. You're going to be a force to be reckoned with. I'll tell you that. You're going to be powerful in the kingdom of God, and God can use you. And boy, when you put God first, you watch what he's going to do for you. It's exciting. Well, speaking of exciting, again, there's lots of things coming in May. There's new changes, new things on the horizon. I've got so much to do with getting set up for video. There's some new features coming, a new website launch because of the problems that ongoing problems are having with this website. I wanted to put out a newsletter today, but I'm just told that there is a glitch in our mail out, our mail poet. It's just not upgrading and just there's just one thing after the other. So at some point in April, you can expect an e-newsletter. Make sure you subscribe to it. It's free. It's on the website WeCanVigilante.com and be watching for updates. I don't know exactly what God's doing, and that's okay, but He knows what He's doing. I'm just trying to keep up. (laughs) So do keep me in your prayers. I love you guys. We'll see you soon. Good night, and God bless you all.